bandwidth for today's show is brought to you by softlayer.com. We love Softlayer here at Talkopolis. They are the greatest hosting company ever. They make everything easy. Check out their website at softlayer.com. Thanks again for sponsoring the show. Hi, thanks for joining us today on Nashville Fitness and Beauty Roundup. We welcome Brandy Binkley back with us for some great um, information on how she loses fat without losing muscle. So let's just jump right in. Okay, so you are obviously a fitness competitor. We've talked <coughs> about that before. Mm-hmm. Um, and maintain leanness anyway, along with um, you know a good amount of muscle. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you obviously have to eat a certain way to, to do that, mm-hmm. to maintain that, whether it's to diet down for a show or just to say, okay, am I, I'm fluctuating up, I need to trim back down. Right. So how do you eat to lose fat without losing muscle? Because obviously, you know, that, that is a possibility with, say, low-carb dieting. You can mm-hmm. you lose a lot of weight. You can, right. You can, some of that's a good percentage that could be muscle or lean mass you don't want to lose. Right. I, I would say, let's, generally speaking, right. um, when my, you know, clients will ask, you know, how can I lose weight or whatever, and I would tell them what I would do. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that is to increase my protein levels a little bit, mm-hmm. make sure I'm eating often enough, mm-hmm. um, and to decrease the starches right. in my in my diet and the sugars in my diet. Um, and typically, it is my belief, and it's proven, but that you, if you eat enough protein, a balanced protein, a carbohydrate diet, your fat content will be in line. So you can't eat too much fat if you're eating the right amounts of carbs and proteins. Does that make sense? Yes. So I'm not, I don't need to add in fats necessarily if I'm eating a good amount of healthy protein right. from meat sources. Right. So it's a natural fat. It's a natural fat. And so then I don't have to add it in, you know, with nuts and peanut butter and okay. all those other things that people are or can some people actually consider those proteins, but they are fats. Not they are, so in fats. fact, fats. Yeah. And kind of the, a, a good method to follow is like with a food label, mm-hmm. if it says, you know, you've got your substrates, which are your fats, carbs, and proteins, and they're usually in that order, mm-hmm. whichever one of those substrates is the highest. Right, per serving, yeah. Per serving, that's which category it falls under. So if it's highest, like peanut butter, for example, or cashew butter is the highest in fat. Right. Not protein, or sugar even. And you so say then we peanut butter, unsweetened peanut butter. Yeah, I don't. I don't eat peanut butter at all. Okay. Ever. But I'm saying, if the general public, right, looking at peanut butter, we're talking about unsweetened peanut butter right. being a fat. It's a right. Place. It's a fat. Yeah. It's, yeah, a it's fat. absolutely a fat. Um, so those are kind of some things that that can be misleading to people. Mm-hmm. Um, but with regards to leaning out, like if I even see, you know, sense myself maybe because I've got pressures of work. Um, trying to have some sort of a social life, um, you know, doing books, whatever it may be uh, for business, I I have to keep that balance by going, okay, Brandy, Mm. you know, where can we fix the problem here? And it's typically that I don't eat enough throughout the day. Like I'll forget to eat because I'm busy. And I've found that with, I would say, 95% of the people that I've ever worked with, you know, always come in and they're like, oh, I probably eat too much. Well, typically they don't eat enough. And so, you know, when you start adding in, and when people start adding in more calories that are good, dense calories, Mm -hmm. it forces our digestive systems to really take charge and to work. And when our digestive system works, we burn calories. And so that's kind of the method behind the madness of, you know, frequent eating and, and frequent meals, is that if you're eating every three or four hours, you're burning fat every three to four hours because your digestive system's burning calories to digest the food. Okay, so you, when you say dense, you're not necessarily talking about calorie dense, but you're talking about like nutrient whole dense. foods, nutrient, nutrient dense, dense, whole food, not processed foods. That's right. But foods with have fiber, yes. food, high in protein or harder to digest, or so take longer to digest. Yes. Vegetables which have more fiber. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So dense, nutrient dense foods like you know all of your vegetables are nutrient dense foods. Right. Until we touch them, usually. I mean, if we do something to them, like fry them right. or bread them. bread them, you know, put them in casseroles, that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. then you change chemical composition of food and your body doesn't react to it the same. So if they're eating whole foods, meaning, you know, natural foods, mm-hmm. things we haven't necessarily added anything to, right. 
um, then you know that's a that's a more balanced place to be, and then your body recognizes those foods because they are natural, right. and can break them down more efficiently. Okay, great. Now I'm going to get real specific with you. Okay. I want you personally. Okay. How much protein, on average, would you say you eat in a day? And I want I want you. And any in a given day, I typically eat above 150 grams of protein. Okay. In one day. Gotcha. Um, that is consists of you know five meals mm -hmm. at about 30 grams each. Right, that's 150. Yeah, um, 30 grams of protein each. And sometimes it fluctuates a little, mm -hmm. but I, I always get in 150 grams of protein, gotcha. yeah. Which is and, well above your body weight in pounds. Yes, so, yes. Um, well, I'm about 100, I stayed about 128, 130 pounds. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'm, uh, I'm above that because I am incredibly active, mm -hmm. um, but even the general population that's not necessarily highly active right. um, can lose a substantial amount of body fat by eating higher protein diets. Mm -hmm. So for every gram of protein you eat, your digestive system has to process it, right. and in turn it burns 40 calories for every gram of protein just in digestion. Whereas with right. carbs and fats, they burn sub 10. So you're going to get not even 10 calories of fat burning does that make sense? Yes. So you optimize the fat burning process in the okay. digestive system by eating more protein. Gotcha. Protein being animal products, mm -hmm. um, you know, dairy. Right. Um, I'm not a huge dairy fan. I think that just depends on you know each person. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, chicken, fish, lean red meats, uh, things like that. Even okay. you know your protein powders, which are whey, um, those kinds of things. I would not soy. Right. Because soy is not a complete protein. Right. Um, but, you know, your whey protein, your egg protein, right. that kind of stuff. Okay. And in terms of the carbs that you do eat, the vegetables, we're talking about fibrous mm -hmm. veggies. Yes. Not a lot of starches, I'm guessing. No, not a lot of starches. I typically will have a little higher carb day twice a week. Okay. And it's usually like in the middle of the week or at the, or and at the end of the week, like maybe Sunday. It's like a so carb like, cycle. Yeah, like maybe Wednesday or Sunday. Okay. And, um, but... That's only healthy if I eat enough vegetables on the other days. I can't eat just all protein. Right. Because the vegetables act as enzymes to break down the protein in the digestive system. Okay. Well, then I'm going I'm to get, get more specific. Okay. okay. On the veggie day, the days uh -huh. you're not eating starches, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're getting through those three or four days before uh -huh. your carb cycle. Mm -hmm. uh, you're eating lots of fibrous veggies. What? I mean, you're, every every meal you're having some veggies with it? Every meal, except for breakfast. I mean, I may have sliced tomatoes with breakfast. Uh -huh. um, I'll do egg whites, <clears throat> excuse me, with sliced tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I throw, you know, I'll saute spinach and put it mm -hmm. in with my egg whites or something. Right. Um, but yes, every meal. It's either, you know, salad. And I don't mean just like a little bowl. Like, it's a big salad. Right. I mean, there's like, you know, you get probably 40 calories maybe. Right in a huge salad if it's just the leafy greens. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I might throw some mushrooms on there, um, some cherry tomatoes, that right. kind of stuff, onion, right. red onion, that kind of stuff. Um, and I always have a vegetable and fish for dinner. So my vegetable for dinner is typically asparagus, um, right. sometimes, again, sliced tomatoes, um, roasted vegetables, you know, portobello mushrooms, peppers, onions, those kinds of things. But nothing starchy, obviously. Nothing starchy. Mm -mm. Okay, so your carb intake, if you can't, if you, let's say you're looking at net carb, subtract the fiber, just total carb intake. Per really, week is probably 400. Per week? Per week. Okay, on the veggie days, we're talking, that's 400, is like some people eat that in a day. I know. Uh, and we know what that looks like. But, uh, so on the veggie days, your carb intake might be under 40. 40. Yeah, under 40. That's right. Now, and those are the days that, like, and if I'm... quality carbs, obviously. But they're quality carbs, and I'm yeah. full constantly. It's not just 40. Okay, that, that cupcake is... So that hits my 40. I'm going to have that cupcake. No, 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 no. And, and then that's it. It's... You're eating a lot of food, yeah. a lot of vegetables to mm -hmm. get to that 40. Yes. Because they're quality, fibrous vegetables. Well, that's a nutrients, not, not, not energy, but, right. but nutrients. Right. No, not, no sugar. There's no... Right. I mean, the... Sugar, if I get any sugar in my diet, it's um, probably from tomatoes because I do love them. Um, that's, I would say that's it. 
I don't gotcha. really eat a lot of fruit. That's I may not throw a big in sugary food for most it's people. It's not. I know, point. but it does have sugar in it. Um, but I, I, I mean, I may randomly throw in some, you know, half a cup of frozen mixed berries in a shake or something. Mm -hmm. Um, so a little fruit sneaks in there, but they're yeah, low glycemic fruits. Yeah, they're low glycemic fruits. I don't do pineapple and banana and that kind of stuff. Um, gotcha. So, you know, I think, too, like where people get confused mm -hmm. is they go, oh, well, I thought fruit was good for me. Yeah. Well, fruit is good for you, but not four cups of fruit a day, you know. Right. Or if um, you're really trying to cut that body fat down, right. um, you know, your body's not going to do well on sugar. Right. Like high sugar fruits no. like bananas and pineapple, things right. like that. And, and so I would say limit those things. You know, mm -hmm. you can have them, but limit them. And in fact, the funny thing is that, and I can't believe that I say this now, looking back. I mean, I was a girl who ate Snickers and drank Wild Cherry Pepsi as a snack, you know, 12 years ago, probably. Oh. Um, but now, like I, the other day I had an apple and it was so sweet right. because I don't ever have stuff like that. And it, but it tasted delicious to me, yeah. whereas I think, you know, I've got friends who would go, oh, I don't want an apple. Right. It doesn't satisfy their sweet tooth. It doesn't satisfy their sweet tooth. Well, I don't ever get sweet tooth. I really don't ever get sweet tooth. Okay. But it's, I think it's because I had that balance, Right. you know, for, and with carbs, fats, and proteins in my body that I just don't want it. Gotcha. Yeah. That's great. Well, I want to come back to the carb cycle okay. a little bit more. Um, but first, we're going to, we had take a break, we're gonna come back with a different segment, okay. talking about the carb cycle, okay. kind of see what those days look like, whether they're cheat days or they're specifically okay. thing, you know, carbs uh -huh. that you eat that are real specific and why that works. Okay. So, thanks and check back with us for more on the carb cycle. Talkopolis, the social media TV network for your city.